All right, two and one, it's boogie. So introduction to radicals and roots. So this is a topic that sometimes will be covered either in elementary school, depends if your teacher really pushes the envelope, uh, or in grade nine, maybe possibly higher. But you can't really get away from roots or sometimes they're called radicals, just depends who's, on who's teaching. I primarily like to use the word roots, but radicals I know is also commonly used. So before I jump into trying to explain these, this is just an introduction topic and I'll have a few videos to the uh, list. So I'll make a little playlist on these radicals and roots. So I'll put the entire list link up above where I do simplifications and others once they're up. So on the left hand side, what you see is you basically see kind of exponents, right? So you have two squared. So you know that's two times two and equals to four. And then you have two cubed and two to the power of four and then so on until two to the power of n, where n is just the number of times that we multiply two by itself. Now, these exponents and exponent rules, you should kind of know them, okay, before you jump into radicals. I have done an actual full series on exponents. So if you like, I'll put a link up above there to the entire thing. Now, so what that you have these kind of exponents, right? So you may remember that you have a base. So this base is raised to some exponent and then it gives you an answer. And you can go ahead and do that, you know, for higher and higher exponents. And of course, you know, we could go as high as we like. So for instance, if I have say two, and then, so here's our exponent button, x to the power of n, all right? And then if I did it even to the power of 10, you know, you can go ahead and find your answers. Now, sometimes you may not be allowed to use a calculator, but you should know what that means. So now let me now say the following. What if we didn't know the base? All right, so here the base is two, and then we're raising it to the power of two, power of three, power of four. What if instead I wrote something like this? Now, of course, because I'm writing it side by side, you know exactly what X is here. So I have X going to the three, equal to eight, X to the four is equal to 16, and then so on x to the n. Now, we don't know what n actually is, but it will be some answer. Let's say y. Now, when you look at this, so you know x here is equal to 2 because you have the left-hand side right beside you. Now, when we do not know what the base is, then we can find out what the actual base is by using radicals or by using roots. So the equivalent way of writing the two to the power of two, let's say, equals to four, you can write it in a different form. So using a slightly different symbol. So I'm gonna show you, okay, what that symbol is. So let me do that here. And for that symbol, so what you have is that your base X is actually equal to, so you can take, and now we use this, this is called a radical or a root. So this symbol, so this is the radical, or sometimes it's called the root. And it is the root of your answer. So notice your four basically goes under that radical. And your exponent here, so this exponent two, will be placed right here, all right? So just above that little kick of a tail that you have there. So this just is the second root of four, or sometimes we say four radical two. Okay, so I typically use roots. So I'll say, you know, the second root of four. Now, because this has become so common, we typically don't write the two and we just write this, you know, and that's why you see that on calculators and people know that that is called the square root of four. Uh, because they just drop this little two, but the two is actually there. And now, if we would continue this for all of them, so let's say for the second one, so it would be x, and now this would be the third root of eight. All right, so that's how we would write that. 
Now that three cannot be dropped anymore because we want to be able to say what root it is. Okay, now the following one is going to be x is equal to 4, and then this is, okay, root of 16. So the fourth root of 16, that's how you would read this. And then this continues on, where basically you can find out any root that you like. So this is the nth root, in this case, of y. So that's what you have. So that is the, the radical, and it basically just finds out the base for you. So, you know, if you took out, so let's say if I had a calculator here, so you'll notice that on the calculator we have these roots or these radicals, symbols there. Now, depends on your calculator, you know, you may have, so just a simple square root. So, for example, square root of 4, you know, if you hit this, it's going to give you the base back, which is 2. Now, remember, what that means is 2 times 2 is equal to 4, which is going to give you what you have under the radical. Now, this, okay, so when we have this 4, when it is placed under the radical, we call this a radicant. So I know that this is kind of weird terminology, but that's what it is. So in the bottom one, the 8 is the radicant for the third root of 8. And then 16 is the radicant, okay, for the fourth root, all right? And you can continue this. You can find all the answers. Now, because, I mean, we already know what the exponents are in this case. So it's 3, 4, and so on. And we know what the base is. But, you know, you should also be able to use it on your calculator as well. And if you're not just doing a square root, then you have to look for a symbol. So notice that on here, so what you have is I have this symbol which looks like this on your calculator. And then you have to learn how to input your actual numbers in. And that will depend on your, on your calculator. So unfortunately, you know, it may not be exactly the same as here. You have to learn your calculator how to do that. So for instance, if I wanted to take the, let's say, fourth root of 16, so I cannot press just square root of 16. Now you may already know that the square root of 16 is 4. All right. So here I have to use this and then I have to put what my n is. So this is the fourth root. So notice of 16 and it equals to 2. All right. So that's how you utilize these buttons on your calculators. And hopefully now, you know, you know the root or the radical. Okay. And how to do it. So most of the time when you're just starting these things, teachers will force you not to use a calculator, I hope. And you kind of learn to simplify these things on your own using prime factorization. And I will have a video in this series on that as well. Okay, so you can go back to the playlist that I linked in the beginning of the video. And, you know, you can go and find the simplifications, how to do that without any calculators. So I'm not going to do that here because I just want to introduce the topic. Okay, and introduce this root or this radical. So now that you can kind of see what these radicals or roots actually do, they basically are just finding whatever your base is. Okay, so whatever your base is. So notice on the left-hand side, okay, we can find, I mean, for all of these, it's always equal to 2 because that's exactly what I have set them out to be. But they're, of course, not just with 2. They can be with anything. So for instance, if you take... Okay, so if I take the square root of 9, now this, of course, we would just simply write as that. Again, this 2 is dropped from here. It doesn't mean that it's dropped and it all of a sudden is equal to 1. It's not. It's still equal to 2. And the square root of 9 is just simply to 3. And that's because 3 squared is equal to 9, which is your radicand, all right, under the radical. So you can always double check in that way. So you're doing kind of a reverse. Now, and it's not just for square roots, it's obviously for others. So for instance, if we had the cubed root of 27, you'll notice that this also is equal to three. All right, because again, so three to the power of three is equal to 27, and that's exactly what our radicand is, okay, underneath that radical sign. So that's what we have. 
Now, they do become more and more complicated. All right, so I'm gonna just show you here so some other examples. So here's a four examples right here. And you can see okay, that these are becoming harder. And they don't have to have the radicant. So the radicant, which is underneath right here, they don't have to always be just integer numbers, all right, or just whole numbers. So you'll notice that you have these right there. And those are decimals, the, the third and fourth example. The one thing that you do have to be careful, especially as you're starting, is that the radicant cannot be um, negative all the time, all right? So sometimes it can be and sometimes it cannot be, okay? But when you're just beginning this, you will find, okay, because this is just an introduction, that will keep them positive, all right? So that's what the answers will be. Now, the other aspect that I want to mention before I get into these examples that so for instance within here so as you're doing this when you have the square so for example it's the um, square root of a number it doesn't always give you a positive answer back there's it could be either positive or negative so what I mean by that is the following so if you have so let me just clear this up here so I'll delete that and then I'll delete that we're mostly used, okay, or, or we're mostly used to, if we take the square root, okay, to give a positive answer. And that is, again, because 3 squared is going to give us 9. But the square root of 9 can also be negative 3. Again, because negative 3 squared, which is equal to negative 3 times negative 3, is going to be equal to 9 as well. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us, that if you're going to take the square root, so typically what you might see as an answer, if you're going to be writing, you might see somebody write, it's either positive or negative. That will depend, of course, on maybe the application that you're working, so on the problem. Sometimes negative answers will not make any sense, so you only have a positive answer. But if it's just for mathematical reasons, you'll just put that the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3 because both of them actually work. And the same thing is true if you had the square root of four, it would be plus or minus two because negative two squared, now again, it's squared all in brackets, is gonna give you four back. Now, this is not true necessarily when you have, okay, so these roots, okay, so when you have this root right here, so this was for squared. So when your root, so this is n, and this becomes your, you're taking the nth root. When it is even, so for example, when it is 2, when it is 4, when it is 6, 8, and so on, then the answer, so your answer is going to be either positive or negative. All right, so that's what you will have. And the reason is because, okay, when you have them both as pairs, okay, and you multiply, let's say, negative 2 times negative 2, that always gives you a positive back. So as long as your roots are even, then the answer can be either positive or negative. If your root, okay, is odd, so if your root is odd, now 1 um, doesn't really make any, many, any sense, okay, so the first root of a number because it just gives you the number back. So I will start with three. So three, five, seven, and so on. In this case, if your radicand, okay, so if your radicand is positive, then the answer must be positive, right? So that's what you will have. If your radicand is negative, then your answer will be negative. Okay, so that's what you will have within there. And I'll show you some examples as well with that. All right. So here, okay, if we're going through these questions, so let us take a look and see what the answers are. And I'll try to explain these, okay, just by um, taking out our calculator and then seeing through because these ones are a little bit larger. Okay, so how would we do that? So here's the fifth root of 243. All right, so you can input this in. 
and this is good for you in terms of trying to practice this out. So this is the fifth root of 243 equals to three. Okay, so the answer here is three. Now notice because five is odd, so the answer can only be positive. We cannot say that the answer is negative because if you took negative three and you took it to the fifth power, so if you took so negative three and you brought it to the fifth power, notice that the answer would have been negative 43. All right, so to give you a contrast, if you had a question and it was something like this, and you notice that, ah, this is now negative, then the answer here would have been negative three. All right, so that is for odd only. Okay, so only for odd. Okay, so for this second example, so if you have this, notice that here we have an even root. So we're gonna take the sixth root of this number. Now, if you do that, you can check it for yourself on the calculator or not. Okay, this is gonna give you a seven. Now, because this is even, your answer is gonna be either positive or negative. So you can ask your teachers how they want this displayed if you're doing it in school or something like that. But if you would take, so here, if you take negative seven and you would raise it to the power of six, you would notice that you're gonna get exactly the radicand back. And if you raised this, okay, so seven to the six, you're gonna get exactly the same thing back. So that's why the answer can be both either positive or negative, or it depends on the application. Sometimes negatives do not make sense. The next one that you have in here, so notice that the root is, this is fourth root of 6.5536. So this is interesting because now it's a decimal. Now for decimals, it doesn't matter. You do them exactly the same way and you can check what the answer here would have been. All right, so if I take the fourth root, now first of all, because it's even, it can be both positive or negative. So the answer can be both positive or negative. So 1.6, that's what we have there. Now this one right here, and let me change it. Okay? Instead of having it positive, I'll put a negative in there. So if it's negative, all right, so what is the third root of 10.648? And this one, the answer is going to be negative. All right, so that's going to be negative. And you can check that for yourself. So if you put this and you put, let's say, negative 10, 0.648, all right, equals to, and it gives you 2.2, all right, which is negative. All right, so that gives you kind of an introduction to radicals, all right, and roots, how to find them, hopefully what they mean. You do have to do a few examples. What I will leave you off with is that you cannot, especially as you're starting off. Now, later on, if you get into high school, it is possible, but those are gonna be something called imaginary numbers, but when you're starting, okay, you can ignore it. When your n, so when your n is even, you cannot have a negative number underneath there, okay? If you want real number answers, so keep that in mind. Um, so for real number answers, okay, you cannot have these negatives within, okay, or you would just leave it as is. So for instance, if you took, say, the fourth root of negative, I'm gonna just, just arbitrarily write this, all right, something like that, okay, and then that negative, you cannot get a positive answer out of that. So that's what I wanted to leave you with at the end. All right, okay. So thank you for watching. That finishes this video and we'll see you in the next video on these radicals. Bye everybody.